Hello, good day, and welcome back. And so today, I want to talk about how we return value and or error from our route handler. In the previous video, if you haven't seen that yet, link is right here. We talk about what a route is, and we focus on how you specify the paths for the route, you know, all the different ways you can do that. Now I want to talk a little bit about the handlers. So let's jump to it. Just so we're all starting off on the same page, remember that once we import the fiber package for version two, we have a new function that is exposed. So once we call that new function on um, the fiber package, we get back a value that is of type fiber app for this app value it provides a number of methods right this value itself exposes or provides uh, methods which we can then call to do a number of things um, we've seen that there are convenient methods for setting up our roads which we talked about before and those methods essentially uh, take a path which we talked about in the last video if you haven't seen that yet link right here and one or more handlers so here's the tricky thing i'm going to stick with just showing one handler for path in a route for today in future videos we'll talk about when you will want to use multiple handlers and why okay because there's something that's a little bit tricky about that so let's just keep it simple so today I simply want to focus on the handler and specifically how you return values and or errors from your handler. So we'll start off by copying our episode four directory to episode five. We'll start, start up our editor. I mean, use whatever you like. And once I have that started, I'll remove exercises two through exercise five. And I want to keep things simple in this video. So um, if you notice, we have a handler function. And I did that the last time because I wanted to just focus on adding handlers um, in a separate file so I could show it side by side. But today, we're not going to be creating many handlers. So I'm going to actually delete this handler, that go file. And we'll simply stick with our one main that go file. As usual, I want to start up my um, task here and have it watch, you know, for file changes. So that can be run in the background. So when I'm ready to test, I don't have to actually go run anything. So let's look at this one route we have defined called get all books. Now this route has the path slash books. It um, is defined for the HTTP method get, and there's a handle called get all books. So let's write this handler here in the file since we deleted it from our, we deleted our handlers that go file. We don't actually have an handler, so let's write it. Now, as you can see, the signature for a handler for a route is simply a function that takes a pointer to a fiber context value and returns an error. Very, very simple. So here's what I want to think about. I want us to take a minute to ask ourselves, what does a handler do? Just thinking about a handler itself. So I'll say there are basically two things that a handler does. One is that it's responsible for doing the work that's required or requested for that endpoint. So if it's a delete book, then that's what it needs to do. So that's its primary responsibility. But also if it did the work and it didn't let the client know what happened, what was the result of that, then I don't think it's complete. So the second part of it is that it needs to return to the user some sort of response. And either that is the result, again, depending on what is requested or required for that endpoint, and or potentially um, an error. So some example of what it might have to do in terms of the work required might be to query a database, um, you know, get some data from a file, then write some data to a database. That's what's required in terms of the work, right? But in performing those action or doing the work, it might encounter an error. 
So if that happens, then we will want to return an error. Now, if it can do the work, then maybe we want to return a result. And sometimes that might be, you know, returning some JSON value or maybe no value at all, just a error code saying that oh, everything is okay. So in this video, I want to focus on the res second responsibility for an handler and ignore the first one because the first one is going to depend on what that endpoint is supposed to do. But for now, I want to focus on how we can handle replying to a request, assuming that oh, we've done the work. So since our handler simply returns an error, the easiest error or simplest error we can return is a nil value. So what happens when we return nil? So if we were to return nil and then we go test our handler, and so we do a call to slash get, well, of course, we don't have get defined, so um, books. What we can see is that we have a 200 OK, and we don't have any data. You can see content length says that it's zero, and that makes sense. We didn't return any data. We just simply say that oh, there was no error. So it makes sense that if there's no error, then we get a 200 OK. Now, if you're not familiar with it, HTTP has these error codes, they're called, or status codes. And 200 values usually mean that everything was good. So there's 200 OK, you could do 201, blah, blah, blah. So what about if we wanted to actually return an error? So to demonstrate a non-nil error, we'll just construct an error using the FMT package error F function. Notice when we make a request now, what happens? Not only do we get a 500, it says internal server error, but notice that our data or the text that's returned is our error message. And again, this is something that Fiber is doing automatically for us, is taking the, turning the error into a string and returning that as the data. And because the error itself is not, is not nil, it made it a 500 to say that oh, there was an internal server error. So what if we wanted to send a different HTTP error code along with our error message? In that case, we can use the new error function from the Fiber package. And this allows us to both set an HTTP error code and an error message. In this example, I create a new error that is the HTTP error code 200 with an error message. Now, this is sort of like misleading because if you were to send this to a client, they would be confused as to why you have 200 status codes saying everything is okay, but then your message is there's some kind of error. But let's assume that, oh, I wanted to send something else. And so if I go back to the command line and I query, you can see here, I do get a 200 error HTTP status code and I still get my error message as in terms of text. Now, if you don't want to worry about memorizing which error, what the HTTP status codes are, those integer value, you can just check the HTTP package, the standard HTTP package, and just type HTTP that status, and you'll see all the predefined error codes there. If you are over one of the constants, you'll see the value, the corresponding integer value. And um, status OK is equal to the value 200. And that's what we see. So we can play around with sending other, um, you know, HTTP status code, like for example, status internal server error. Um, you can do bad gateway, which, um, you know, status code, HTTP status code 400 and so on. So you can see there are a bunch of them there. This is all nice and dandy, but maybe you actually want to return a status code without, you know, actually returning a message. So how can you do that? So in that case, what you want to do is then use the send function on the fiber context. And this allows you to send any status, HTTP status code that you want. As you can see, we can say, for example, HTTP status bad gateway. And once we call that, no, it um, works as we expect. So what if you actually want to return a value now to the user? And I'm thinking here, maybe 
what you want is maybe you create a new user or you look up a new user or a value and you just want to set, set return that. So let's start off with a very simple value like an integer. And so imagine that we have the result in 42 that we want to send. So if we look at the send functions on the, the send methods available on the fiber context, we can see that there's send and takes a slice of bytes. So that basically says you can send almost anything. Um, we can send a file. We could send status, which we looked at just now. We could send a stream, which we're not going to really talk about right now. Our, or we can send a string. So if we want to send our integer value as a string, then we can format it. Uh, we can use the sprintf function from the FMT package, and we can just say, you know, print line. Everything is done. So let's see that. And again, you can see we have HTTP status code 200 and then our value 42. Now, because our send function did not have an error or it returns nil, that is why we get in 200 OK. But we give it a value, so 42, so that was returned. Now, of course, if we want to return a string, that is pretty easy. We just pass a string directly to send string. We don't need to format this as a string because, well, it's already a string. Now, if we want to send a slice of bytes, we can just convert our previous string to a slice of bytes and use the send function. So that works pretty straightforward, pretty easy. This now leads us to the fact that if we have a slice of bytes, then if we want to return JSON, for example, we can just marshal any value to JSON and the marshaler returns a slice of bytes. So then we can just send that. So let's pretend here that we're going to have result be a struct value. So I'm going to create an anonymous structure and create a value at the same time. And so I can't send that directly, but what I can do is marshal it to JSON and send the representative bytes. And so we want to make sure that we're using the right JSON package. So I have to go up to the top here and double check. Go to my command line and a test. You can see I do get my JSON value. Now, here's something interesting. If I scroll back up and I look at the content type, which is essentially telling the client what type of information was sent back, you see it says text.plain. But you and I just agreed that oh, I send back JSON. So ideally, I want this to say, application slash JSON to give a hint to the client as to what type of data was sent back. So what I can do is go back to my function and sort of overwrite what the content type is. And in order to do that, what I need to do is get the response object and then set the header because content type and that sort of information that you see there, that's all header information in the response header. And so let's run this and see what I get. And notice now what the result looks like. I get the same JSON value, but because my client can tell that this is in fact JSON based on the content type in the response error, it formatted nicely. Not that this really matters. This is just basically my HTTP client on the command line has formatted this. But in the browser, your browser might also do something similar if it knows that oh, it's JSON, it might be able to collapse it and that sort of thing and pretty print it and so on. So um, that's, there's some reason for why the content type is important. Plus, if you have a client that is not a browser, that's another application, knowing the content type might help it in how it process that data. So you definitely want to be, make sure that you have the correct content type set for the data you respond in. If you notice, what we had to do is we had to force marshal our data and then make sure that we had the correct content type, especially in the case of JSON, because Fiber doesn't know that we're spending, sending back JSON. We could have been marshaling XML and it wouldn't know either. We'll have to set that you know, application XML. So Fiber includes a JSON method on the context that takes care of all this for us. So all we have to do is pass our value to the c.json method and it's going to do essentially the two previous line marshal data for us and set the correct content type so this covered everything i want to say about how the 
fiber route handler returns values and or errors to the client. In the next video, we'll look at multiple handlers. So if you've made it this far, I would really appreciate it if you would give a thumbs up to the video, um, leave a comment about what you like, you didn't like, and if you're not subscribed, subscribe. I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel out. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And finally, if you or someone you know is thinking about buying something from Tesla or even doing a test drive, please use my referral link below. That helps me. I'm going to keep it short. Hopefully um, you learned something. Take care. See you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.